Hi everybody, welcome back to the Cleanse Reboot series. Great to have you back and welcome and thanks for joining me. This is the last in the Cleanse Reboot series and we're talking about the gallbladder today. And the gallbladder is one of my favorite organs to talk about when it comes to hormones and actually balancing out hormones because the gallbladder is so very important. We kind of don't really talk about it that often. We don't talk about it until it causes pain. We don't talk about it until we have it removed. We don't talk about it until we have stones. It's, it's kind of the forgotten organ, a bit like the appendix really. But the gallbladder is so, so very important. The gallbladder is a storage. It sits near the liver and it stores the bile the bile that's produced by the liver. The bile is made up of water, it's made up of bile salts, um, bilirubin, cholesterol, fatty acids, lecithin, potassium, calcium, and also bicarbonate. And what will happen is the liver will produce bile and it produces, um, in, a, in a kind of like a 24 hour period, it can produce up to kind of one liter of bile. And that's stored in the gallbladder and that's around, uh, I suppose, 60 mils-ish is stored in the gallbladder. And it's actually quite, con it's quite um, condensed. So it's not as watery as what's been found in the liver. So it's very, very condensed of bile acids, bile salts, cholesterol, very, very strong. And that's stored in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder goes through different processes, through intracellular. And then what happens is when there's food in the small intestine, in the, du in the duodenum, it, it lets that bile go and that bile is there to actually kill off bacteria in the small intestine, excrete toxins via the bowel and break down fats. So that's it, the bile's main function but definitely one of the biggest functions is helping to excrete toxins from your digestive tract, killing off bacteria, cleaning things up and so you can excrete your toxins, your hormones and everything via your stool. Um, symptoms can be, symptoms of gallbladder issues can start from be symptoms such as when you eat fat, you might get tired, you might get malaise, you might get nauseous, you might get foggy in the head. I know I hear that from a lot of people if they have a, a green smoothie, smoothie that's very high in coconut fat. They say, oh, it made me feel a bit, ooh, a bit, a bit heavy in the head. And that can just be that the fats aren't getting broken down, the gallbladder, gallbladder is a little bit sluggish. And I'll talk about what sluggish means in a minute. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, intolerance to fat, so you have fat and then you um, diarrhea quite quickly. So that means maybe you're not used to fat and maybe the gallbladder needs a little bit of work. SIBO, so small the bacteria in the small intestine. FODMAPs can also indicate gallbladder issues. Um, inflammation and pain can e indicate gallbladder issues. Wet, stubborn weight and weight gain can mean the gallbladder is not working effectively. And duodenal ulcers as well can also mean that it's not working properly because duodenal ulcers can be related to bacteria inflammation, can be related to H. pylori. So if the gallbladder is not doing its thing, it's not producing a nice liquid runny bile salts and, and, and bile from, that's from the liver, then it won't clean out the small intestine and you might get ulcers, bacteria, all of that kind of thing. So you can see there's a myriad of different symptoms. And then we've got the pain. We've got pain. So a lot of people might get pain um, in the gallbladder area through their front that radiates through to the back. Maybe they get a bit of shoulder pain. That can also mean that the gallbladder is a little bit sluggish. And then some people get stones. And we'll talk about what stones means, what's happened with stones. And you know that gallbladder removal is actually very common. So it's one of the, one of the most common kind of removal things that happens in the body. And what, what really tends to happen is once we get stones in the gallbladder, it's very difficult to get rid of them. And that leads to the removal. So what we want to do is we want to nourish our gallbladder. We want to make sure it doesn't get to that stage. When the gallbladder is sluggish and when it's sludgy, when the bile is sludgy and thick, like honey kind of, then we, we can still work on the gallbladder. We can keep on working on it and we can save it. We can prevent um, any stones being formed and that kind of thing. So what's really happening is when the bile gets concentrated and it gets stored in the gallbladder, it's, it's more concentrated and there's more cholesterol and more kind of salts. What happens is if the processes aren't working properly is more estrogen and more toxins and more hormones and more heavy metals, more fat soluble, um, vitamins, everything goes into the, into the bile, it's more concentrate. And then what starts to happen is it starts to get dehydrated. 
because it's just not functioning. So it turns in, instead of being this nice liquid kind of bile that's, um, for some it can be a dark green color, it starts to go kind of a browny, thick, kind of sluggish. And it sits in the gallbladder and starts to get dehydrated. And that's the precursor to stones. So it gets dehydrated and then little stones can form and they can get, grow into big stones, causing a lot of pain, getting blocked, that kind of thing. So really we want to prevent that first. So I'll just talk about that and preventing gallbladder attacks. Now, the, gall, the reason I love talking about the gallbladder is because there's such a strong affinity to the gallbladder and elevated estrogen, so gallbladder and hormones. It's very common that if someone's had a gallbladder issue, you've got hormonal issues as well. It's very common to see gallbladder removal and hysterectomy happen. That can happen you know, years apart, but it is co common for women to have both, both removed because there is a hormonal implication. Gallbladder also is very, very much connected to methylation, COMT, NTHFR. So what actually happens is your liver does its thing. Your liver starts doing the phase one, phase two. It starts doing the methylation. It starts doing the COMT, the MTHFR, all of those kind of things. And then it sends what it needs to send. It sends the bile to the gallbladder and then the bile gets concentrated. Now, <clears throat> if the methylation in the liver isn't working correctly, it's going to be sending many more toxins, much more estrogen into the gallbladder. And this is where the problem starts to happen. This is where the gallbladder bile turns into more of a sludge and it builds up and then it causes estrogen, estrogen dominance and then there aren't the enzymes to break it down. And what happens is, is the gallbladder and the liver then have to work harder. They have to work a lot, lot harder. And with methylation issues and the COMT and the MTHFR, Anyone with those conditions, you're low in a number of things. You're low in B vitamins, you're low in methyl donors, you might be low in SAMI, you might be low in particularly choline. Choline is very, very, very important and it's very likely that if you've got a methylation issue, you're low in choline, particularly the COMT. And so that's why people with a COMT methylation issue get gallbladder and get liver, get fatty liver, because they're so low in this choline. It's this choline that protects us, protects, it works in that kind of methylation cycle. It helps the COMT enzyme to break down estrogen, to break down toxins. So if this process isn't working, what happens is, is the bile that's in the gallbladder gets thicker, gets sludgier, and then slowly it turns into, turns into stones. Also during this process, estrogen will rise. And so you may also get estrogen dominant conditions associated to gallbladder sludge. Estrogen dominant conditions are um, stroke, um, endometriosis, fibroids, weight gain, depression, hypothyroidism, heavy painful periods, um, <clears throat> all of those things. So you may find you've got gallbladder issues and you've got these estrogen dominant issues because if your gallbladder is not working, the estrogen is just going to continue to rise and your body can't excrete it. So what the body is trying to do is when the bile is released from the gallbladder, it should have some estrogen in there and that's detox via your bowel. Hi Lisa, how are you? I hope you're well. So what we want to essentially do is we want to prevent these. And so there are circumstances where you really want to be working on your gallbladder. So pregnancy is one of them. Pregnant women tend to have more hormones. And so really pregnant women need to be making sure they're nourishing their gallbladder, working on their gallbladder. If you're taking um, any HRT or a contraceptive pill, any synthetic estrogens, if you're taking any of those, you really need to be working on your gallbladder and helping your gallbladder so it doesn't get sludgy and it doesn't get backed up. This will also help support you. And also, if you're doing any fertility support, you need to be focusing on your gallbladder as well and make sure you're nourishing it because then the gallbladder can get rid of any excess hormones and they won't build up and cause difficulty in your system and cause that inflammation and cause those negative side effects that the elevated estrogen can cause. Also, what you need to do is you need to be making sure you're giving the gallbladder the raw materials it needs. So <clears throat> B vitamins, folate, so methylfolate, an activated form of folate, your activated form of B12, your activated form of B6, giving it choline. Choline is very, very important. So all of these things, if you need to support your liver and support your gallbladder, 
you need to be giving your gallbladder these things and that will just help to emulsify the bile it might help to thin it out and that will help to detoxify remove these heavy metals remove the toxins and remove the hormones from your body so that is so very important what tends to happen later in life with postmenopausal women? So we've got two things that are happening. We've got when prior to menopause, your your estrogen might be fluctuating a bit, but postmenopausal, some of your estrogens might dip out. And if your estrogens dip out, you're actually less likely to be able to produce some of these methyl groups. Particularly, you're less likely to produce choline. And choline again is very important for your liver and for your gallbladder. And this is why it's very common in postmenopausal women to get fatty liver, to get weight gain around the abdomen, maybe to have gallbladder attacks, maybe even to have to have the gallbladder removed because the choline is so important in nourishing and thinning out the bile. That's really all we want to do here. We want to keep that bile in the gallbladder thin. We don't want it to thicken because as soon as it turns to sludge, that's when you have the problem starting and that's when you can have the gallstones forming. So it's really important that postmenopausal women get your choline, make sure you may need to supplement with a, co with a choline supplement, phosphatidylcholine, some kind of a good supplement. You may need to do that, particularly if you've got signs and symptoms of um, memory problems, memory loss, all of that kind of thing, fogginess. Because what the body does when it doesn't get the raw materials externally is it starts to pick you apart internally and get what it needs to get internally. So if you're not supplementing with choline or if you're not getting it in the diet from amino acids or from egg yolk, what your body is going to essentially do is it's going to be going to your protection, the cells, the kind of the cover of the cells, and it's going to be picking it and doing what it needs to do and going through a methylation process. So this is why it's really important that you're getting the raw ingredients either from your diet or from supplementation, particularly if you think you've needed it. And if you've had a lifetime of estrogen dominance and hormonal issues, and then you're going into menopause, you most likely will need to supplement with choline. Most likely you will have to do that. Um, <coughs> if the bile gets sludgy, another thing you may notice is pain, because what's happening is you're getting a buildup of toxins in the body, you're getting a buildup of hormones in the body, and this is more likely to leave, lead to pain. So again, you know, lots of pain, achy joints can also be a symptom of bile sludge and the gallbladder not working effectively. Um, if you've had your gallbladder removed, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It doesn't mean you can't still support your system. But what, if you've had your gallbladder removed, essentially what then you haven't got is you haven't got the concentrated bile to spit into the, to shoot into the small intestine to detox, to cleanse, and to break down fats. So one, if you haven't got a gallbladder, you might be pr more prone to fatty acid deficiency. So that will cause pain, that will cause inflammation, it might cause depression. Um, it, all of those fatty acid deficiency signs and symptoms. So fatty acids, your E, your A's, your omegas, um, your D. So you might be low in those. So you may want to, if you haven't got a gallbladder, you may want to supplement with your fatty acids, get them in your diet, or take a supplement to help you with that, because that's one thing. If you haven't got a gallbladder as well, your body is going to be struggling to detoxify. It will struggle to detoxify, and you need to support your detoxification process. So what you need to do is you need to be giving all your nice phase one and phase two to your liver. Support your liver, support your liver as much as you can. And thirdly, you need to be supplementing with taurine. As long as you haven't got any sulfur sensitivities, supplement with taurine because taurine has been shown to really support the liver and support the gallbladder, or if you haven't got a gallbladder, support that whole process. So that's very, very important if you've had your gallbladder removed. One last thing if you have had your gallbladder removed is you're going to need extra bile salts when you eat. So even though your liver is going to be pumping out the bile, if it pumps out the bile, the bile's not going to be strong enough. It's not going to be as strong as if it was held in the gallbladder. And it may be haphazard the way the liver pumps it out. It's pumping out a bit, but it may not be enough for you to, to use. And this is why sometimes having smaller amounts of things is helpful. So a little bit of fat in the diet. So I recommend, say, half an avocado. But if you haven't got a gallbladder, you might want to just go very low dose on the fat. Because what you want to do is you don't want to overburden your digestive tract your small intestine because then it will sit in the small intestine and you won't have enough bile to cleanse it not to cleanse it and digest it so always go lower dose lower dose with things like that smaller amounts of fat just a teeny weeny so if you see a, 
a smoothie recipe with a cup of, cup of coconut milk, just go a teaspoon to a tablespoon. You need to get a little bit of fat in your diet. If you go 100% fat free, it's going to cause some issues and you will have some issues in terms of with, with um, fat deficiency. So um, Jacqueline, cashews are fine because they're lower in fat. So macadamias, pine nuts and seeds are higher in fat. Cashews are higher in um, carbohydrates, so they should be fine. But what you want to make sure is you need to supplement with a really strong bile acid. So ox bile is fantastic. So every time you have a main meal, you take the ox bile. And what that's going to do is that's essentially going to take the place of your gallbladder. So it's going to do exactly the same thing as your bile and your gallbladder. It's got, the, it's got the water, it's got the bile salts, it's got some fatty acids, it's got some sodium, potassium, all of those kind of things and a little bit of choline. And it's going to help. To digest that meal so definitely if you haven't got a gallbladder you need to be taking the ox bile supplement or a really great bile salt supplement with your meal and that's one that's come from um, you know derived from uh, beef de derived from um, um, cows or pigs I've forgotten the name of them <laughs> so um, those ones you can get from iHerb Jackie you can't actually buy them from shops in Australia you can get betaine hydrochloride um, in a supplement, but that's just your betaine hydrochloride. If you get the bile salts, it's going to have the nice cleansing action. It's going to do everything that your bile is going to do, and that's why the bile, um, the ox bile, is important. But you can get that from iHerb. Definitely, I would recommend that. And supporting the liver, really supporting the liver to do what it needs to do, um, in terms of your bees, in terms of maybe some milk thistle all those kind of anti-inflammatories and the choline. Cho normally with liver supplements, there, isn't, there is a bit of choline in there. And I know with some magnesium supplements as well, there's a wonderful magnesium suppl supplement um, by Bioceuticals called Ultra Muscle Ease Calm, and that has some choline in as well. So that's very, very good. Um, you can also take extra taurine, and I know that um, some magnesiums do have extra taurine in, and a little bit of taurine, again, that's a methyl donor that will help with the liver or support the liver, and so you don't get any of those negative implications when you don't have a gallbladder. So remember the gallbladder function. The gallbladder function is to break down fats in the small intestine. The gallbladder function is to clean the small intestine. So if, you're, if you don't have a gallbladder, you might be more likely to um, be getting bacteria and parasites in the small intestine and that's why it's important to have a little bit of a break from food so if you haven't got a gallbladder and you're a grazer you're constantly grazing you're not allowing your small intestine to have a break and clean itself it's really important and then you're more likely to get things like SIBO bacteria in the small intestine duodenal ulcers inflammation in the small intestine so you want to be making sure you've got a good length of time between eating you know three to five hours and that will allow the body to clean and do what it needs to do in the small intestine and completely clean it out. So that's very important as well, just giving your digestive system a little bit of a break. Gallbladder is sensitive to people with methylation issues. Gallbladder is sensitive to people with elevated estrogen. It's also sensitive to stress. If you've got low stomach acid, so really making sure you've got a, a good amount of stomach acid and it's strong stomach acid, it's not, it's not, um, it's not low, it's not too alkaline you want it to be nice and acidic exposures to toxins exposures to pesticides this will all affect the bile um, and it will make it thicker so if you think you've got any exposure that's going to be affecting the liver and the bile then I would highly recommend you do a light kind of liver gallbladder protocol at the same time and just just to get those working and just to get your bile nice and nice and thin if you've got a gallbladder and you've been getting pain, if you've got a gallbladder and you've been diagnosed with gallbladder sludge, I've got a few clients that come to me and they say they've got gallbladder sludge. Essentially what that tells us, it tells us a couple of things. It tells us, one, you're not methylating properly and your liver's not functioning properly. Two, you've got a hell of an exposure to something outside, toxins, chemicals, that kind of thing. So remember, gallbladder sludge is exactly that. The gallbladder, the, the, the bile is thick, because of something that's going on in your methylation system or an external environment. So if you've got gallbladder sludge, you need to be working on the methylation and you need to be thinning down that sludge. It is possible and you can definitely do it and it, I, would, I would highly recommend it. Anyone with gallbladder issues, it most likely you've got a methylation issue. So you want to be taking your bees, you want to be taking your choline, maybe some taurine. 
maybe some globe artichoke, maybe some milk thistle for the liver. Support that whole process and that will help the gallbladder sludge to thin out. Another thing you want to do, and that's where yoga is quite good, is you want to encourage the gallbladder to actually be excreting everything. You don't want it to just be pushing out a little bit of the sludge. You want to empty that gallbladder. And so that's why when you've got gallbladder sludge, you do want to be having things that encourage the gallbladder to release the, the bile, such as fats, that kind of thing, and see how you feel having that. You want to encourage the gallbladder to do its job and to keep on working so that it doesn't get too sludgy, too dehydrated, and then you get stones. If you're someone that's been diagnosed with a large stone, it's difficult, it is harder. So I would encourage you, instead of focusing on the removal or, or, of the stone, because you, surgery is most likely when you've got stones, I would focus on the cause and I would support your body. So if you've got stones, again, it's more likely that you're estrogen dominant, it's more likely that you've got a methylation and a detox issue and it's more likely your liver's not functioning so if you've got stones support your ball gallbladder with ox bile support it with some globe artichoke support it with some choline and support your liver with some bees and support your liver with um some nice milk thistle really get that going on and lemon and water and by doing that you're, you're supporting both i'm not saying you will get the size of the stones down but what i'm saying is if you do have stones you need to be supporting what the cause can be it's very very important um and that's where i go and again go super super low on fat because the fat obviously um once the gallbladder pushes the sludge out and if the stone's big it can get caught in the duct and that's what you want to prevent essentially um so, yeah, the gallbladder issues, they can lead to the hormone excess, toxin excess. So if you haven't got a gallbladder, you do want to be helping your body to be cleansing naturally and removing things. You can focus a little bit more on the liver and focus on the liver. So what you want the liver to do is you want the liver to turn as many toxins as possible into water-soluble vitamins to excrete through the kidneys. You also want to encourage the liver to break down any larger molecules into smaller molecules so helping phase one phase two detoxification and then you want to help the body elsewhere so dry skin brushing oil pulling all of that thing all of those things that are going to help your body to excrete the toxins if you don't have a gallbladder so doing all of that and definitely doing the ox bile the ox bile will um, be wonderful and um, I haven't actually done any research but one of the things I'm looking at is is having a look at how ox bile might be able to help clean the um, the small intestine out which I, I haven't researched it enough and i will but having a look at okay if we haven't got our own bile how can we use ox bile to actually detoxify so that's something i'm looking at at the moment so i'll share that with you you might be interested in that jackie so i'll, I'll share my findings with you there so what to do definitely what to do so just an all-round protocol whether you've got a gallbladder whether you haven't got a gall, gallbladder supporting your body with bees so activated bees low dose activated bees some choline inositol and taurine those things will support your liver. They'll support your gallbladder to do its job. Um, magnesium, and some magnesiums do have taurine. Globe artichoke is, one, is wonderful as well. And I suspect the reason globe artichoke works so well is because it's actually high in choline. And we know how good choline is for the liver and gallbladder. I've had clients on, <coughs> on, um, on globe artichoke for gallbladder sludge and it works wonderfully so if you feel you've got thick gallbladder sludge then maybe maybe look at um doing some globe artichoke but definitely the bees the taurine the choline the globe artichoke um using those definitely some people like to use sami if you're low in sami um because sami and east sami has a an affinity to um to the methyl cycle so you can see how you go but definitely just start off with the bees the taurine and the choline hi riel i can't find what can i use for dry skin brushing if i don't have the proper brush look i mean i can definitely if you don't have a brush if you don't have a natural bris bristled skin brush then i would actually just do some light it's all about just um getting to the lymphatic system so the lymphatic system sits very close to the skin just here and so it's just about being gentle so you can just do it yourself with your hand if you need to or you can do it with a flannel or something a towel just before your shower very very light long stroke movements and you kind of do it towards the heart like this and what that does is that just the, the lymphatic system is a nice pump and it just slowly pumps the lymph to where it needs to go to cleanse it out of your body 
and, um, and, and convert it and cleanse out the toxins and reuse things that it wants to reuse. So I would definitely, definitely do that to support your body because if you're supporting all these channels, particularly if you don't have a gallbladder, you're taking the strain off the gallbladder. But it's very important to recognize that if you don't have a gallbladder, you have gallbladder problems. Elevated estrogen is most likely an issue for you. Toxicity is most likely an issue for you. And you may have SIBO as well, which is bacteria in the small intestine. So just keep that in mind and, and just focus on one thing at a time, supporting the liver and supporting the gallbladder. So I hope that helped. There was actually a lot to get through. And um, we've, we've, we've talked about kind of connecting things. I've connected, when we've done the Cleanse Reboot series, we've connected each thing to what can be going on hormonally and particularly the methyl cycle as well. Because when it comes to hormones, if you're not methylating and you're not detoxing, you're going to have hormone issues and particularly estrogen dominance. And estrogen, we need estrogen, but also estrogen can be so inflammatory for us. It can cause pain. It can cause growths of things like endometriosis and fibroids. It can cause issues with, um, issues with cancers. And it can cause depression and thyroid problems. So it's really important for us to just step back and just start with how does our body do its job? How is our body cleansing? How is it, how is it getting rid of things? And cleansing, unfortunately, it's not as, as easy as just doing a, a juice fast for three days because our body needs certain nutrients. It needs certain minerals to actually perform its job and we're all different and there are a lot of us with methylation issues and so it means we just need a little bit of extra loving care and just something a little bit more tailored to our needs. So um, Raoul, if you don't have um, a gallbladder, it's okay to eat fat. So as long as you're not having any negative, negative um, kind of issues with eating fat. So what I would suggest is what you want to do what you want to do is you want to support not having a gallbladder so that you get the most out of those fats. So fats have lots of fat soluble hormone, sorry, vitamins, which help, you know, butter has your A and your E, you've got D in butter, um, you've got E in your avocado, um, you've got olive oil with E in, you've got all these, and you've got fish with omega-3s. And so there's all these beautiful fatty acids that you want to be making sure that your body is breaking down and you're utilizing. So I would recommend if you don't have a gallbladder, even if you don't have problems eat digesting fat, I would do an ox bile supplement so that you're breaking down those fats into smaller molecules and you're absorbing them through the small intestine because you might find without a gallbladder, you're, you, you're not absorbing the fat so you get more pain, you might have memory problems, you might have dry skin, that kind of thing. So I would highly recommend an ox bile if you don't have a gallbladder. Um, I haven't got a fact sheet, Jacqueline, but I can um, I can put something together if um, on that one on the um, on the gallbladder if that's the if that's what I know that that interests you, so I can I can have a look at putting something together and let you know. But um, I hope that helped. So supplements, of, yeah, I'll have a think about that and the best supplements. And if we use iHerb and Bioceuticals and Metagenics do have some, but iHerb have some have some great ones as well. So um, I will put down my recommended supplements. I hope you found that interesting. I hope that helped you. But I, and I just want to highlight that gallbladder is so very important. So don't forget about it when you're cleansing. Um, and maybe, maybe refer back to this so you know what to do in the future. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Riel. Thanks, Jacqueline, for joining. Thanks for your questions. Really appreciate it. And until next time, bye.